Hello and welcome to the fifth part of uh, the demonstration of segment routing. In this video we will see how we can do more fine-grained traffic steering using strict hop tunnels and adjacency labels. So as before we have an active ping going through the network and this time it's uh, going through the green uh, loose hop tunnel that we uh, created in the previous video but in this one we want to create this red tunnel which is trick hop tunnel uh, where we will define each node and also we will use this adjacency segment or uh, adjacency label that represents only one of the outgoing interfaces from router 103 forcing it forcing the tunnel to take uh, only one of the two uh, paths between 103 and 104. So this adjacency uh, labels have only local significance but it can be de um, de defined as part of a tunnel from anywhere else in the network. So as before we go to config mode on the controller CLI and start with um, node 101, node 102 and then when we get to node 103 we will define the adjacency and pick uh, the adjacency label uh, for uh, that interface. And then we will continue defining the tunnel with node 104, node 105, um, I'm sorry, node 104 followed by node 106 and that's enough to define the tunnel. So show tunnel shows us uh, what we just entered uh, for the tunnel path and we see that it has reduced to a label stack 103, 103005 and 106. The reason is that, of course, we don't need the label 101 because that's where we are defining uh, the tunnel. We also don't need um, label 102 because that's where uh, the group at 101 points to. So the first label that 102 needs to see is actually 103. Uh, it pops that off. It goes to router 103 and the first label that router 103 sees is, 103, is the adjacency label. So let's see uh, what the tables look like. Uh, in switch 101, uh, we will look at the group table and now we can see that um, that label stack 103, 103, and 106 is defined in this group chain um, where group 25 points to uh, pushes label 106 and points to uh, the next group 24 which pushes the middle label and that points to uh, the final group 23 which pushes the outermost label and sends the packet out of port 3 towards um, router 1 or 2. Then um, we um, will take a look at uh, the MPLS table in, uh, in router 1 or 2, uh, which is the second hop of this uh, strict hop tunnel. And in router 1 or 2, um, the first, uh, the outermost label uh, that uh, router 102 sees on the incoming packet is label 103 and the rule for label 103 is is just that it pop when it's not uh, the bottom of stack label which it isn't uh, it'll pop the label off and send it out of group 8 which points towards um, router 103 we look at the MPLS table in router 103 and this time we will look at the adjacency label 103.0.0.5 and again it's not the bottom of stack uh, so it pops um, off the label um, and this time it blindly sends the packet out of output 5 which, which is how we select only one of the outgoing interfaces. Um, so back in router 101, um, uh, again, we see that uh, the tunnel has been created, but there are no packets uh, that are going through the tunnel. For that, we will have to create a new policy. Um, let's call it policy P2. Um, uh, and it's the same policy type, tunnel flow. Um, where we give it the same flow entry that um, the previous policy P1 had, um, which was going from sor source um, subnet 10202, uh, sorry, 10201 to uh, the destination subnet, which is 10202. Um, but this time, um, we, will, we will tell it to take tunnel T2 and 
do so with a higher priority of, let's say, 2000. So that will be um, enough to um, make the packets go down the red tunnel instead of uh, going down the green tunnel. So uh, the, the prioritized um, policy uh, making is something that we can do uh, using the ACL tables in, uh, in hardware. And so now if you watch um, the ECMP groups in router 101, we find that uh, it's the red tunnel that um, whose packet, uh, packet counters are incrementing instead of the green tunnel that we created in the previous video. Okay, um, we can just as easily uh, remove uh, these uh, tunnels and policies. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I would like to show you that uh, um, uh, the ACL table in 101 where uh, the policies have been implemented. So notice that tunnel creation and policy creation only happens at the head end router. We don't need to touch any other router in the network um, to have these tunnels and policies uh, being implemented, which is basically the source routing uh, paradigm. So now uh, I try to create, uh, I try to remove a tunnel but it says that I can't remove it until I remove the policy that points to that tunnel. So first I remove the policy and I go back into the ACL table and I see that, that the policy with priority 2000 is gone. Um, and if I do show tunnel, again, that shows that uh, tunnel T2 no longer has a policy pointing to it. So now I can go ahead and remove tunnel T2. And so if I go and look at uh, switch 101 and it's... Um, its group table, um, we'll see that uh, the groups that represented tunnel T2 um, have disappeared. And so I could uh, also now remove uh, the earlier policy that we created in the previous video, uh, as well as the tunnel that it pointed to. And again, we look at the group uh, table and now um, groups 21 and 22 have also gone um, that represented uh, tunnel T1. And so that active ping, uh, after going through all these policies and tunnels, is now back to using the default ECMP shortest path uh, that is represented, represented by group 6.